Um, yeah, don't shout out just because the, the camera won't be able to hear you. You need to speak into the microphone. If you do speak into the microphone, keep it close to your mouth. Goes for you guys as well. Close to the mouth. We have Jerome from the IFSC, and we have Stefan Glovac, who won the first ever climbing competition, we think, pretty much. How about that? 1985. Uh, my name's Liam, and I will be looking after you guys. We are live on the internet, globally live. We have a lovely audience here. We have all of our guests. We encourage you at home to please put your questions in the comments box just here. Uh, we will be taking your questions. Someone over there will shout them to me, and I will put them to the panel. Similarly, if you guys have questions, put them to me, and we'll put them to the panel. Can I come sit down right in the middle? So let's start with oh, the question. I'm going to pull my phone out so we have the word in. The question is this. What effect is the Olympics having on climbing? What does it mean for the future? Stefan, I'm going to start with you. Just because you're on that end. What effects do you see Olympics having on climbing so far? So hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great honor to, to sit here in this, in this uh, round here. And um, so, yeah, let's say um, I was a competition climber from 85 to 93. And I really enjoyed it because it was a lot of fun. We trained outside, but now it became a completely different story. And um, so 92, it was um, the Olympic uh, demonstration contest, uh, unofficial in Albaville, and um, so I won this one as well. And, um, and uh, we, we thought that's, that, that's great that uh, climbing is getting Olympic, but uh, then after this de demonstration contest, um, it was sure it will, for, for this time, it will net, not happen because it, then it became short track. And um, they, they were searching for an, a new discipline for uh, indoor event, and uh, they thought maybe it's, it's, it's maybe climbing, but it's stupid for the Winter Olympics <laughs> to, uh, to make a climbing competition with uh, small little shirts, um, with shorts. <laughs> and Inappropriate lycra. Yeah, absolutely. In a proper lycra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I still have it in, uh, in my stock. <laughs> and, um, now, and, and this was a shame because um, uh, we realized, we climber realized that it's way too early to talk about the Olympics. And we knew ex right after this demonstration contest that it will not happen in the next time. And um, when I heard that climbing is getting Olympic now, next year in Japan, I, I, was, I was very, very happy. But when I saw the, um, uh, the structure yeah. and, um, and of course the whole format, I said, this is ridiculous. Okay. This is so stupid. Interesting. Because no one will I see it from this perspective, because um, as a climber, it's great uh, to go to the Olympics. But uh, we are climbers, and there are some disciplines like the speed. It's like a monkey race. It has nothing to do with proper climbing. Interesting. Lead is okay, bouldering is perfect, but uh, you always have to see it from the perspective of a non-climber. And it's way too complicated to have three disciplines. You have sectors in bouldering. Um, and if, you, if, if you're not a proper climber, you don't know what's going on there. And at, at the end, one becomes a medal. For what? For all the three disciplines. So you have to watch three disciplines. And uh, so I think you always have to see the show factor yeah. in the whole thing. It must be good and, and realistic for the athletes, but also for the public, non-climbing um, public, climbers public. And... Um, and uh, from my point of view, it's way too complicated. No one will get an idea if he's not a climber. Interesting. Okay, so strong opinion to start there from Stefan. Uh, I want to quickly make a round of applause, actually, and give a welcome to our guest who's right there. Please welcome Adam Andre. 
You might have heard of him, or maybe not. Please join us here, Adam. Uh, of course, for the guests at home, Adam's joining us now. Um, I have so many questions about that specifically. Just to quickly touch a follow-up question there. With all the, that opinion that you have, what effect do you think it would have on climbing as a greater sport that the athletes are competing in all three disciplines? So you don't like the format. What's the effect of that? Hi, Adam. <laughs> I, I think it's Hello. more important that he, he, uh, maybe he can answer this yeah. question. Uh, my role model, my new role model. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I would, I, I, I'm a little bit worried that, um, that it won't have a lot of uh, impact uh, okay. in, in, um, for, for, for climbing in general. Um, because of the disciplines, it's, it's, it's too far away, it's too complex, what I said before. And, um, and it's too, yeah, an athlete who will, uh, will become the winner of the Olympic, first Olympic uh, championships. He has almost no chance to, to, um, to deal with this uh, effort and uh, to, to, make a, to, to make a business out of it or uh, let's say to make it public and uh, to work with that yeah. title because it's, they are so tight and uh, and um, and um, yeah, so tied in, in in this Olympic concept that um, it's, it won't have any effect for for the climber at all. Okay, interesting. So very strong opinion to start, as we said. Uh, let's give Jerome the mic. Um, it's worth pointing out before I ask you the same question. The format has been announced for 2024, and speed climbing has been separated from lead and bouldering. So lead and bouldering is now one event, one medal, and speed is another. We're going to go to that. Later, uh, Jerome, the title question to you. What effect is the Olympics having on climbing? What does the future look like? Well, hello, everybody. Um, the effect is pretty difficult uh, to, um, to guess, especially because it's far, far is going to be huge. But overall, for me, there's two tendencies. The first thing is that we're probably, to, we're probably going to be more climbing, more climbers, so more fun, more people to climb with. That's the first thing, and um, and the second is that it's going also to uh, to to make the, uh, the the whole activity more dynamic because we'll have probably new actors, new uh, interests. Like say, it could be broadcasters, it could be also sponsor who will bring some more resources to the to the sport. Um, then the side question to this is, what do we do with this? Um, because they could be positive outcomes, but they could also be uh, some some challenges. So for me is going to, um, to just amplify that growth that we experienced in the past year. Um, and if I can say so very simply, if now climbing is part of the games, it's also because already it was something that was growing. So there's an interest from the Olympic movement in bringing a sport that is becoming more and more mature and is bringing also values and, and, um, and good athletes um, to, the, to the movement. So it's... It, for me, yeah, it's going to be more interesting, more fun, maybe more challenging, but uh, probably a little bit big, big, bigger. Great. Rachel, as a, not as a climber, but as someone at the IOC, what effects can climbing expect to see, would you, would you say? I think the, the involvement with climbing in the Olympics will impact everyone here in some way or another in the next few years, whether it's as a result of Tokyo or as Paris. Everyone will, will hopefully feel the impact of the Olympic values and of the Olympic movement. And in particular, from our perspective, we, we hope that it will help professionalize the sport. It will bring extra income, extra funding models, um, and extra broadcast and sponsorship opportunities for climbing. And ultimately, that will impact the athletes who are at the heart of, heart of the Olympic movement. Great. Funny. Uh, as an athlete, what's the effect that you've seen on your climbing so far uh, from the Olympic involvement and what do you think it's going to look like for you going forwards? Um, for me, it has been difficult to deal with training for all discipline and I'm specialized in bouldering, but I found it interesting to try to be back in other discipline. But for sure, for me, it would have been better if uh, it was all three disciplines in Tokyo. Uh -huh. And hopefully it will be split in the next um, Olympics. And yeah, I think for every athlete, it's a very good experience to be part of the Olympic Games because for it, it's a lot of visibility and 
yeah, I think it can grow really fast and maybe that is a dangerous point because mm, it can be some bad points in growing too fast. But yeah, we just have to educate new climbers and make it go in a good way. Sure. Uh, Adam, hey, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. So uh, specifically with you, there's been a big campaign. One of your main sponsors, Black Diamond, have done a lot of communication about the road to Tokyo, which, of course, we still don't know who's going to be there for sure. Um, how do you see the effects of Olympics on climbing so far um, as an athlete, but also the climbing community? As an athlete, it's definitely hard to measure how much impact there is uh, from the fact that climbing is Olympic. And maybe the climbing would be more popular even without the Olympics. But for me, it's definitely, for me, the most important change is that I'm walking down the street in my town and people recognize me, which didn't definitely happen five years ago, sure. only within my own small outdoor or climbing community. But in fact, I think the fact that climbing is Olympic will not change the sport of, of climbing on the rocks so much, which I think is the, the, the people that criticize the fact that climbing is Olympic, they are the most scared of that it, the cracks will be too crowded and with too many people that don't really know how to be behave outdoors. I'm not really that afraid about that. Sure. It's our responsibility to educate the people that want to climb outdoors, that start climbing in the gym, to, to tell them, hey, this is how it's done. More and more people will only climb in the gym, yeah. and I think climbing is growing in the gym incredibly, but at the same time, the numbers of people climbing outdoors is actually not growing that much. Yeah, yeah I think that's definitely something. And actually, to kind of continue that, from a visual reference point, bouldering certainly doesn't look like outdoor climbing in the, the indoor competition sense. Lead climbing, you know, all those volumes doesn't look anything like climbing really and speed climbing, as we've already said. There's no reference, so maybe, yeah, maybe that's a thing. Charlotte, um, as a climber yourself, but also someone with the IFSC, what's your opinion? How's climbing changed so far? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one because I have a fur on working with IFSC and former athletes. And I'm also part of the Athlete Commission uh, of the IFSC. So I have some uh, IOC um, knowledge a little bit. So I see a lot of things happening. Um, yeah, we, they're going to be a huge spotlight uh, on climbing. So as everybody kind of mentioned that we have to like do the right education to the non-climbers and future climbers. And, and has, um, as Adam mentioned, it's, it's not going to change the roots of climbing, which are outdoors climbing. They're going to be more people. Um, we know that, and that's something we can, um, we can prepare for as far as like access preservation and um, outdoors preservation. Um, but for the rest of climbing, I think all those new climbers that will come will be part of that new breed of climber, kind of, that we've already seen appear in the last few years already. Uh, that's climbers that will only climb indoors, um, that might do it just for fitness, you know. It's, yeah, it's different. It's far from the roots of climbing, but it's, it's part of it too, and it's an addition to what already exists. Uh, it's not going to change our sport completely. It will just add new stuff. Um. And I think one of the questions that we should ask ourselves that, you know, when we talk about new climbers and people being only indoor climbers, you know, why do we need to make that a thing? Is that a big deal? Like, you know, it's something that I think all of us as both, it's like an only indoor climbers, but that, why should there be judgment on it? It's just climbers. Right. You know, and, and I think that's something that we could explore quite a lot that we're not going to right now, but you know, why is it a problem? Um, Bram, I'm going to ask you a question flipped on its head because we've had six opinions already on the same one. Rather than how is climbing uh, being changed by the Olympics, how is the Olympics being changed by climbing? Uh, that, that's a very interesting question. And then first of all, thank you. And, and nice to be here, everyone. Um, you know, the, the impact climbing is having on the Olympics is, is quite interesting to analyze. It's, it's very new for us. 
We've never had a sport that goes into the air. We've never seen that before. It's something that is very exciting for us. Um, but it's also a, a whole new community. You know, it's an untapped community. It's uncharted territories for us and that we're very much willing to, to explore and looking forward to yeah, really involving the, 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 the people and, and, and quite trying to get to know the community better and see how we can leverage um, climbing more in our activities. You know, what we can we learn from you guys so we can make the Olympic movement better, uh, just like vice versa. You know, come to us with the questions. We can support and we have, uh, we have knowledge uh, in a wide range of sports, which can be applicable to climbing as well. So there's, there's really this joint partnership that's something that's very, very exciting for us. Um, and, and really, yeah, trying to, to, to get out there and, and getting to know the people and, and trying to understand your sport better is just super exciting for us. Great. Um... So at this point, I'm just going to remind the people watching at home, you can ask questions in the comment section just here in the chat. We have someone that will ask them to me. So if you do have a thought, an opinion, on a question, or anything that these guys are saying or anything on the topic itself, then please do stick it in there and someone will ask me. Similarly, does anybody out here have a thought or a question before I ask my next question? Just throw up a hand and I'll come see you. Don't be shy. Wow. Uh, okay, very quiet. That's all right. We'll warm you up. Don't be scared. Um, my next question is on the format itself, and I'm going to start with you, and we're going to work this way. Um, the new format for 2024. 2020 is fixed. We know what we're dealing with. Um, if you don't know what you're dealing with, then you just need to watch some videos online because it's there now. You know, the information's out there. 2024, we have two medals assigned to climbing now, um, but not three. Can you talk a little bit about that from the IOC's perspective? Um, Yes, no, of course, and, and, and first of all, maybe just to put things into perspective, um, the IOC session has agreed to, to provisionally include climbing for Paris 2024, right. um, but the ultimate decision will come in 2020 um, at the IOC executive board on the exact number, the, the events and the athletes that we will have, sure. uh, which will give us the opportunity to go through Tokyo, to go through the process and, and, and do the data analysis as we do for each of the uh, Olympic sports. So that just, uh, just to close that... Um, bracket yeah um, then when it when it comes to the format again um, the responsibility of the um, of, of the format of the competition and the running of the competition at the Olympic Games sits with the International Federation so we're very well accompanied here with with Jerome and Charlotte who will be better placed to answer the specific question in the shift of the uh, the format change great well in that case I'll open it to Jerome wow to Jerome and Charlotte why are there only two medals um, well, first I'll start um, just a little background. Like when I was a competitor and I was not at, at all involved with IFSC, um, I thought like the managers and the CEO of IFSC were people with like a tie and not climbers and like were didn't know about climbing. And when I got closer, I realized it's you know it's us. We're former climbers. We climb outdoor, outdoors. Uh, the president goes in the mountain every weekend, so we are. Like, we know what climbing is, and like everybody from the board know what climbing is. And obviously, the goal is to have at the Olympics our three disciplines, maybe even four, because the combine is kind of cool. Um, and that would be specific to the Olympics. But yeah, the ultimate goal is like secretly, maybe not so secretly, is really to have uh, the three disciplines separated. But uh, as Ma uh, Jerome can talk about it a bit more, it's, it's complicated um, as a new sport, as uh, Summer Olympic Games, um, very close as far as like number of athletes and number of medals. Uh, it's super packed. Uh, so, so it's a tricky, tricky thing. And yeah, for Paris, we got one more medal. So we can think maybe in the next one after in LA, maybe we'll have three, who knows. But it's, it's progress and and you know when when the idea of having two medals came up, and we had to think about um, how we wanted to to split the disciplines, um, separating speed made the more sense, uh, just because it would bring um, only new climbers. Uh, it would be new athletes, um, like bring new countries, uh, yeah, new athletes, more representation. So it was all very beneficial um, to split it that way, also because. Speed is obviously, um, as we all know, the most um, different discipline. Um, so it made sense to, to link bouldering and lead. But Jerome worked on that a lot, so he can explain more. So Jerome, if you could explain a little bit more, that would be great. So yes, um, so I'll start from the beginning and the Tokyo bid. And basically, um, 
since I mean Charlotte explained you the, the Olympic Games is a, is, is a very big machine. It's, it's quite packed in terms of discipline, in terms of number of athletes. And you need to consider that each and every federation, each and every sport, they want more. They want more athletes, they want more medals, so it's, it's just a constant battle. And, and so the IOC and the organizing committee, they also have a, a, a responsibility to maintain something balanced that could ensure the biggest diversity amongst the, amongst the athletes, amongst the, the, so the, the participating countries in terms of what is so the schedule that is presented to broadcasters, to partners, and so on. Um, so what was, what was the choice that was brought to the IOC, uh, to the IOC, sorry, to the AFC in the context of the, of the Tokyo bid is that there's, there's one medal. So one medal means one medal for men, one medal for, for, for women, one event. And this then came just on, on the AFC. So the, the, the IOC, of course, they can always give advice, uh, but that's the choice of the AFC. And the choice was very, extremely simple. Either we go with one discipline, and so we have like, the lead climbers who can access the Olympic Games and we can benefit of all the developments, the money that will come to fund the infrastructures and so on. Or we go, we reactivate the combine because the combine was actually uh, existing. We go for something that combines all the three disciplines. In such case, basically all the athletes, even though it's more difficult, it's way more difficult, we all know this, have a chance to access the Olympic Games. So we went on to that uh, option for that simple reason that it was inclusive of uh, all the, the, the best of sport climbing, the three disciplines, so we can showcase, showcase the best of our sport and give a chance to all the athletes. Whether it was a perfect choice, probably no, because I used to be an athlete, I was specialized in bouldering, and if I had to leave this, I would have been okay. Not easy. And I understand, I mean, all the point is, is pretty fair here, but we say, okay, let's go with this, and we hope that at some point we can, we can get more for, uh, for a couple of reasons, and eventually in the, in the context of Paris, um, we explain why we wanted more, and eventually that was, uh, that was uh, accepted, still, under, uh, still need to be confirmed, but that was the very simple rationale. Um, and again, we understand the frustration and we understand the question. Um, but uh, at some point, we, we, needed to, we needed to go with something. Adam, funny, um, as athletes, obviously, you've invested a lot of time uh, into speed and to lead you into speed and, and you know, versi uh, diversifying your training across all three. What's your thoughts on this new format? How are you going to... Are you, are you into it? Four years from now, are you still going to be training for the Olympics? Are you going to be going into... 2024, what, tell me about that. Well, even though I totally understand the, the decision of the IFSC, I still think would have been probably better to go only for the one discipline in the point of, most Im importantly, from the interest for the non-climbing spectators. I think, unfortunately, the combined format is very difficult to understand. And just the Olympic finals itself just takes too long. It will take at least three hours, maybe three and a half hours. And if we only pick one discipline, could have been very short, very easy to understand for everyone. Yes, it has a lot of advantages, disadvantages. But um, which discipline it, would you have picked? Which disadvantage? For sure that no, no discipline. Which discipline would you have picked? I, f I would pick lead because of the historical... Uh, you would pick bouldering? I would pick speed. I would I'm not joking. I would pick speed. That's the, the most entertaining. It's the one that's most relatable to the Olympics. It's the one that had the least impact on climbing as a sport as we all know it. Put speed in there. It's the one the IOC wanted anyway, right? Give them speed. Hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, carry on. Yeah. Uh, I, I think lead has uh, uh, like a new factor among the sure. uh, Olympic sport. Speed is like a factor in so many different sports. Yep. Whereas the factor of difficulty is kind of new in the Olympic. That, that's why I would pick lead. Nice. And so your opinion on the, the change of format. Um, so for, for next year, going to just bouldering and lead. Or will you be entering speed? Uh, no, I will not enter in speed. I think speed is really interesting to improving in climbing, in bouldering, and speed in and lead. But I'm not so fan of the um, speed comps. 
And yeah, I think to choose just one discipline to be in the Olympic could have been interesting because it's just um, bring something that already exists and it's simple to understand and it have, yeah, it have his public already and it just gets something into climbing and then if people are interested, they will go over the other discipline and and for the two, uh, the next Olympic Games, um, I think it will be better to split them, but yeah, it will be even better to have those three disciplines. And um, I think my main, like I'm really pleased that it's gone forward and that there's a split. And Stefan, I'm gonna ask your opinion in a second actually. I think it's really good, right? Yeah. Like people can be a little bit more specific, but my main problem with it is we still aren't gonna see the best athletes in the world in each category. We will in speed, undoubtedly see the fastest athletes, but we're not gonna see the best boulderers and we're not gonna see the best lead climbers. For example, Domen, you know, Domen Skofic, unbelievable lead climber, makes pretty much every final, pretty much every podium guaranteed in a lead competition, still struggles reliably to make a semi-final in bouldering. You know, and you could insert many, many names in there and you could switch that and I think what I would love to see as a climber and as a big fan of competition climbing is the best speed climber. You know, I want to see the battle between Basa Mawem and Ali, like, uh, and Reza Ali, you know, definitely. I want to see the battle between you in lead and somebody else and you in bouldering and somebody else. You know, that's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Stefan, what's your opinion on the, now you know that the, the new format, 2024, two medals, one for speed, one for bouldering and lead. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the right uh, development and uh, it needs uh, development uh, in the whole process because my point of view is climbing don't need Olympic but Olympic needs climbing they need refreshment they need uh, the young um, disciplines that they need the young sports uh, so in Tokyo it will be surfing it will be skateboarding it will be um, 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 the new uh, base basketball format and uh, and uh, so Olympic is getting old and no one is getting interested anymore in this doping disciplines and uh, not, the, not the young kids. They are interested in surfing, they are interested in skateboarding, they are interested in climbing. And I think the position of the federation, which was much stronger as they expected, because definitely climbing don't need the Olympics. For what? Climbing is growing crazily. We, if you see all the indoor uh, facilities, they are packed, so and and Olympic has just a little more impact in that, but the growth is on the way. So we don't need uh, the Olympics for climbing. And um, and what what's a little bit, uh, what, what's a pity is that the whole um, competition climbing is not improving. So it's it's like uh, the 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 league climbing. Formats are still like when I was competing in, in the 90s, in the 80s. Nothing really changed. And um, for the Olympics, I, I, I was expecting something completely new, very attractive, like deep water solo climbing. So the cycle block format, I would say it, it would be the best for the Olympics. Two climbers in a hard route, uh, climbing above the water, 80 meter high, and you're expecting them falling off. And that's, that's a big show that's very fast and it's, it's, it's real good sport. So when I, when I watched in Park City all the, this competition, it's great for the athletes, it's really good uh, fun and it's, it's great for spectators um, who has no idea uh, what, what climbing is. Uh -huh. And it combines all these disciplines. Yeah. And uh, so this is what I expected as a new format for, for the Olympics. And not this complicated, huge thing, but <laughs> nobody, even the climbers don't know what's going on. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, any I, questions out here? Any points? Could I, yes. Could, yeah, sorry. Could, could if, just to, to, to bounce back off Stefan's Do. points, which I, which I think are very valid, and, and thank you for those. Um, I, I think what we, we should remember is the opportunity it presents, and, and, and switch it a little bit. Climbing, we, we're not there to change climbing, right? We're trying to, to help climbing develop and grow um, even further. Um, to, to put it in simple terms, you know, we, we're an event once every four years for 17 days. Climbing is all year, every day. That's your life, that's what you do. But for those 17 days, you have four billion people watching your sport. 
So if you can put up the right show, if you can deliver and get those people excited, get them engaged, where well, you get them more involved in climbing and, and develop that structure and really, really try and, 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 and yeah, leverage the, the Olympic movement. You know, the 206 countries worldwide are now exposed to climbing a lot more than they were previously. So there is opportunities and I think there is, we, we need to work together and we're mm -hmm. doing this very well with, with the IFSC and, and obviously very welcome to, to listen to the athletes here, which is which super interesting for us, um, but really try and leverage and, 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 and make the most out of climbing at the games because it is an incredible opportunity. I think to, to bounce back off that, which is a great re uh, rebuttal to that, is whilst the Olympics is only 17 days, once every four years, for the first time, really, I've seen it so much this year, but we saw it last year as well. Um, quick raise of hands if you watch the IFSC Bouldering World Cup online. Quick, uh, put your hands down if you've noticed significantly less athletes at every competition. You know, the thing that I've really noticed is season on season, you could always rely on a full tour from someone like Fanny. You know, she would be there every single competition, and we would expect to see her battling for the overall World Cup medal at the end of the season. Same with you, Adam. Maybe slightly different because you have lots of different projects going on, but there has been times when it's like, that is my goal, and that's what I'm going for. And I have conversations with athletes on a regular basis, and it's like, ah, you know, I'm skipping this one, skipping this one, doing this one, skipping this one, need to rest because I want to do lead, got to train speed. And those conversations certainly wouldn't happen if the Olympics weren't happening. So there's a definite effect on it that's really affecting other competitions. But I totally, I, you're totally right. Billions of people can be and will be exposed to climbing. Jerome, is there something you wanted to say? <coughs> yeah, um, just one point on whether climbing needs the Olympic or not. I mean, uh, I don't want to turn to the debate because this is a very uh, legitimate point, but let's also not forget that behind um, what is actually visible, there's a lot that is happening thanks to the games. Just taking the example, um, uh, I, I was discussing with, uh, with the wall manufacturer the, this morning, and he told me, well, now we have a huge new facility that was paid by the government because uh, they could see that climbing is in the games, and they hope to have athlete training. Um, so this maybe this, this facility would have come at some point, but it's here now. Uh, and also we see some countries where there's very little climbing tradition um, that now climbing is, uh, is, uh, is an option for them to get a medal at the Games, on the long term probably. So it's, it's definitely bringing us to the, f to the fast lane. So whether we need the Olympics here in Europe, mm, okay, maybe it's not bringing too much, although as Bram said, it's going to be the, the exposure. We cannot even imagine the size of the exposure that the game brings. When you look at the figures, that's just crazy. So um, we're going to benefit of this. And the main question, I always come back to this, is what do we do with this? With this, with this exposure, with these new uh, incomes? Uh, that's the main question, actually. Interesting. Uh, any questions out there? Yes. Wait for me. I'm coming. Slowly. <laughs> Close to your mouth. Um, the, we have seen a lot of change, I think, especially in bouldering and the style, and we talked a lot about spec tackle. And I wanted to know what you think about how um, the Olympic Games will have an impact on the style to make it even more spectacle, make, for example, bouldering style more like parkour, or if it will have a positive impact, like I think we've seen in Innsbruck in the Olympic simulation where you have a lot of m more money for the cameras and camera work and close-ups on small holes and stuff to showcase what the climbing sport is really about and that's not too close to parkour. What do you think will the impact of the, um, of the better infrastructure be on the style? Who wants to take that one? Maybe our athletes. I mean, one thing that I would say from a setting perspective is I hear a lot of people asking about, you know, parkour's not climbing, we need to go back to small crimps. Adam, what's the smallest edge you can hang on, weighted? Couple of millimeters. Couple of millimeters. So, and he's not on his own. Granted, he's bloody strong, but he's not on his own. And we put small edges on the wall, and the athletes pull between them. And so this parkour style is definitely necessary in some aspect, just because it's low probability. That's definitely something I to I think said. parkour style is good for making rankings, because it comes down to more attempts. And you can attempt a ball problem in shorter time, more times. If the, if the ball problem is really hard, you go for a flash, you fall, and then you wait until the very end of the time limit to get a second try. 
that in perspective of the, of the many resetters is maybe not so much fun. Uh, at the same time, the old school style doesn't have to be just hanging on small edges. Like, if you look at climbing outdoors, it can be incredible technical, even though at the same time it has nothing to do with parkour. I would welcome just like a combination of different styles. I think in the last two, two years, there has been maybe just too much coordination stuff. I'm very happy to see that it's maybe getting a little bit back to the roots where you really have to be a complex climber. You really have to be coordinated, but you have to be strong in your fingers and you have to be technical more in this outdoor climbing game. And I think that's, that's a positive thing. In my point of view, whether the climbing is Olympic or not, doesn't really have so much to do with the style of bouldering. What I think it does have a, something to do with, though, is the root setters have a really important job, which is to split these competitors in a way that's fair. Now, most international root setters are affiliated with a gym. That's fair to say, I would think. And most gyms that have an international root setter have athletes that are affiliated with them. Karma would be a great example with Jackie. How do we prevent the head root setters, the Olympic root setters, from, even if they don't do it on purpose, influencing those boulders in some way? You know, they're setting a style at the gym. This is the style that they set. Fanny gets to train on that, and then we're going to the Olympics, so, oh, the style's very similar. Yeah, I think root setter is a really hard job, and the main things that they have in mind when they are setting is just making boulders that will make a difference between climber and something that there is a little bit of everything with nice move to watch. And yeah, I think they are more thinking about making the comp work than anything else. And the, my question will be, will there be some, uh, something from the organization, like a minimum of top in some boulders, or something that will influence the setting of the boulder if they will have restriction for the Olympics to make the finals less, less? And yeah, because of course this will change a lot and make the comp maybe less entertaining if, if you need to have everyone topping the first boulder, so they will make something easy, but just with a lot of... Um... So we, we pose that then, I guess, to Jerome and Charlotte. Is it right to say eight athletes will be in the bouldering now with three blocks each, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so three boulders, eight athletes, and, and will there be guidance on the setting from the IFSC, on the setters, on what they can and can't do, how they should do it? Yeah, so that, that's big topic and obviously a very sensitive one. So to answer also directly on the, on the question, the AFIS is not like asking the root setter to do more parkour style sure. or to do more crimpy. We, we really have an approach that is respecting the creativity of the root setters and before being root setter, they are climber. So we trust them, but we, uh, we, we create a framework. The framework is that we need to have uh, the style, uh, variety of style, then we need to be sure that it creates a ranking, then it needs to be also routes that are safe, not creating injuries. Um, where we sometimes uh, intervene directly is on the colors of the hole, so this is uh, highly visible on the, on the TV. But we do not go as, uh, as officials into the, the okay, the, this hole is like this, no, no, you should turn it like that. So we trust the route setter, and that's, that's, uh, that's really um, um, a common process. Now a little bit onto, um, onto how uh, the, the, the root setters, and I know I'm going around the, the, the subject, but how we deal with root setting and the, the fact that the athlete might also train with some of these root setters sometimes is that by creating the complexity, because, okay, if, let's say, let's take Jackie Godoff, was always root setting on the competition. And or Manu work, in, in Switzerland for the Swiss team. It, it doesn't work. And so it doesn't work for just the sake of climbing because it's restricting the style. So we're bringing much more people, much more inputs, and at some point, it's going to be simply impossible to guess what type of movements, what type of style of routes we are going to be set. Uh, that's how we create uh, the, the impossibility of, uh, of getting the information on, on, on the routes. And also by relying on the human nature and the fact that yeah, they want to change this, and um, this change may, may um, impact the route in such a way that even the athlete cannot, cannot anticipate this. So we, um, I would say that everybody should 
work with his own uh, expertise, contributing, and at the end, this, uh, this um, yeah, the outcome is, is good. Cool. <laughs> so far, so good. Excellent. I'm coming to you in one second. Uh, Rachel, I want to bring you back in for a second. Um, a question that came in online, thank you for that, was climbing's a guest sport in the Olympics at the moment. Uh, and it will continue to be that way until what? How can climbing become a permanent sport? What, what does that take? So at the moment, climbing is a, a guest sport, or a provisional additional sport yeah, on what the does Olympic that mean? program. Like so it's accepted on a, on a four-yearly basis. So per Olympic Games, it gets accepted. So for now, it's definitely on the program for Tokyo, and it's provisionally accepted for Paris. And then there will be a process in 20, 20, 23 for LA. And then the IFSC will need to put forward their proposal, as they have done for yeah. Paris, for their medals and their events, their athlete quotas, and how they see that looking for LA. And then it will go through the same process as, as has been done last week with the IOC sessions approval. And so what do we need to do as climbers, as the IFSC, as you know, as a community to stop having to keep doing that and to be like, okay, it's in. Yeah, but maybe, maybe to jump in on that one. So the, just to maybe take a step back and see yep. how climbing got in in the first place. Um, because traditionally we have had the, the, the sports of the Olympic program that are stated in the Olympic charter, out of which then the, the, the program is formed and that is a closed group. Now, with Olympic Agenda 2020, the organizing committee has the opportunity to propose a sport. So the proposal to include climbing came from the Japanese. They came to us and said, because of the growth in the popularity in the sport, we are very keen to have climbing as part of our program. And that's how we got climbing in. Uh, and the same thing happened for Paris. You know, the Paris team came to observe climbing in Buenos Aires 2018 at the Youth Olympic Games. They were blown away by it. They thought it was a great success and then worked with the IFSC to come up with a proposal for their edition. Um, on the institutional side, um, the IOC has a certain set of rules in place. There's only one body, the supreme organ of the, the, the IOC, which is the IOC session that can decide should they wish to modify the way the sport program is currently being analyzed and proposed uh, and which sports are part of that program. So that work is going on. You know, obviously, there, there is, uh, on our side, is something that we're looking at. You know, you have the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires. You have Tokyo 2020, now the proposal for Paris. There's a logic and an appetite for the Olympic movement to have climbing. However, it is an institutional process that we have to go through, and we will run through that um, in due course. Excellent. I'm going to walk over there and get that question while the lady talks over us. Talk amongst yourselves. No, don't. Stay quiet. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much for your patience. What's your question? Um, my question goes back to the topic before, to uh, the, the, the mode and style of route setting. And I think in Buenos Aires, it was the case that the lead combined lead final was decided on time because the route was easier than expected from my perspective so my question is was that not on purpose or will we see this again like I had the impression it was supposed to be decided on time and not on difficulty which I thought was a shame yeah thanks no, that's again that's a very legitimate question and no he, he, it was not decided purposely because it's impossible to decide it purposely. I mean, we, we can guess uh, when you see a route, you guess where it's going to be difficult and where you might fall. But it's, uh, it's pretty much impossible, especially after the three disciplines, to understand where the athlete will, uh, will fall and if all of them will, will, will reach the top. So we had cases uh, where definitely the route was too easy, but if had I mean, doing competitions, so having worked, doing competition also worked on competition. If you look at the route setting team, they are hidden be between the trees and they are like this. Like they are, no, yes, ah, no, yes, ah. And so they are, even them, they have no clue of how the route is going to be, uh, is going to turn. So um, no, no, there's, there's no, there's never any purposes. Of course, we try to have as much as possible one person at the top and the other one just, uh, but that's, that's extremely difficult. What was said in Buenos Aires is that 
guys, you, the root setter, be careful of the, um, the, the, the impact of the previous round on the, 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 yeah, the, the shape of the athlete, I mean, their, their ability to climb. And since it was one of the first combined event in the Olympic mode, that's, that's not easy. To, so that's why maybe if you want to analyze after one, maybe there was a mistake here and maybe the route was too easy. And so eventually that's led to, 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 to ranking on the time. But no, that's, there's, there's never any um, request of that kind. The request is just make a route that allow a ranking and on which the athlete can express the, the, the best. Great question. Great answer. Uh, Can I ask? Because I, I definitely think that this is the biggest danger of the Olympic event itself that could be possibly spoiled because by the pressure of lowering the time of the, of the whole event, it could be the case that the bouldering and the lead routes would actually, might actually be too easy. Uh, and at least the real climbers are definitely disappointed if the bouldering is only decided by one try and if the lead routes are decided by the time. Well, I heard some rumors that, for example, in Buenos Aires, there were some pressure on the route setters of trying to make the routes easier. As, so I would like to ask Jerome, the, is really the opinion of the IFSC is that, of course, the best case scenario is winner takes the top. We can agree. That's the best case scenario. But the second best case scenario, or what is better, is to have three tops in the finals or if the winner falls off in the two, three fourths of the route. From the climber's point of view, it's better if the winner falls off 10 holes before the top rather than having three tops. She's going to speak again. Huh? Maybe. <laughs> we'll answer and then we'll see. Oh. I tell you what, all week they've been doing this. I'm going to have a chat with someone from the ISPO organization, give them a piece of my mind. Uh, just for you guys, you guys at home, you're not invited. At six o'clock today in this space, we'll be having a climbers party with free beer, free cocktails and music. So that'll be fun. Uh, if you guys want to join, buy a ticket. Come, let's do it. Uh, Non-alcoholic cocktails are available as well. So don't worry, guys, you can still train. Now you can yeah, answer. Yeah, so um, I'll start with, um, with the rumors on the, on the, on the yog, uh, because basically I was leading the competition. So I was in direct contact with the root setter, and that's me who told them, okay, be careful about the, the impact of the previous year on, onto the athlete. So no, again, the, the, the policy in the AFC is to, um, we're not having root setters as robots. So I am saying, okay, you, because Adam Pustelnik was the chief root setter, I say, Adam, I know you're the best today, so do your job and make sure the athletes have fun. But this and that, okay, we need to start on time, we need to finish on time, blah, 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 all these things. But these are contingencies that are wrong. But in terms of what route is going to deliver, I trust him and him and, and, and his team. And that's why sometimes they, they feel the pressure like, okay. <laughs> but um, then that allows me to move on to your, no, your next point, okay. The, bullying or lead being too easy. Um, now, we of course know this. And uh, the problem with root setting is that it's not a science. And it's extremely difficult a year in advance in Tokyo where we know it's going to be hot, but when we know it can have uh, thunderstorms, I mean typhoons even, um, with a world that we, don't, we never tried so far with athletes. Uh, you guys are going to be super strong in one year, maybe stronger than today. So it's, with, if you put all the, the, the elements even into a computer, that computer will say, okay, no, sorry, I can't. Is it not a recipe for disaster? Uh, yeah, but so far, I mean, uh, so far it's been good. And uh, if, you, if you just put yourself like two years before or even, even before the, the yoga, if you just put all on the table, it's too complex and there's no chance we, we succeed. But by relaying on the expertise of each and, and, uh, and every people working for the games and working for a world championship, so far we succeeded in having, uh, in having nice events and events that you, you all like to, to, to look at. However, it's not enough. Um, and in the context of, uh, of Tokyo 2020, um, it's giving us a lot of excuse for, for 
like uh, we are uh, changing a little bit the process and we have new ideas on how to address the root setters, the root, the, the root, set, the root setting, not the, the root setters. And we, we're going to try with new tools, with new elements, um, and to see if we can anticipate a little bit the impact of the roots on, on, you, on you guys. So it's, this is going to be run with all the root setters, just in order to give us more choice when we have to, uh, to when we come to the points where we put the holes on the wall, uh, in order to reduce that, uh, that kind of surprise that as suddenly the weather turns to be something super hot, so it's slippery or it's super easy, and then we are, okay, we are about to start, so what do we do? So that's, that's the attempt. But again, in this process, we rely on human. We rely on human that are high experts, like the root setters, and also the athlete commission. Also, at some point, they also consulted. Yes, I'd like to add something on this. Um, like two things, actually. The first one is the combine format was was pretty new, and testing it in Innsbruck and in uh, Youth World Championship and in BA, uh, we like things worked, things didn't work, and one of the things which I think was maybe a misconception from from everybody, I mean, even like between us athletes, uh, we're like, okay, it's combined athletes, so we will not have the best athletes of each discipline. But the fact is, it's going to be the best of each disciplines. Maybe not speed, but like for bouldering and lead, where like root setting has an impact, we're going to have the best climbers of each disciplines. And even if like the finals are all in one day, it, I don't think it impacts their performance in a way that they will show their best. So I think in some ways the root setter will just have to do what they usually as far as setting, just like setting something hard um, for the athletes. And it doesn't have to be easier because it's combined. No, because you'll have the, the best climbers anyway. And the second thing I wanted to add, if I can, I'll speak loud. Um, is like as part of the athlete commission, which I'm a member of, uh, we are pushing for the format where the ranking is made even if people fall low. Uh, like we're fighting for not having many tops. Like as far as athletes, we'd rather not have no tops um, than, uh, yeah, than like having to fight for the time or like a try in bouldering. So I think it's something which is going in the good direction for athletes to show their best and being ranked for, for their performance, really. Thank you, Charlotte. And just in case everyone was wondering what was going on, there is an approaching storm, and they're trying to get people inside because they're concerned. That's why they keep bleeping the bleeper. Um, I have one last question because we're getting low on time now. We still have time for another question, possibly if anybody else wants to chip in, but the last one from me is to you guys, but also as a collective, what your opinions are on it. Um, one thing that I really feel as a member of the community is that climbing is really special in that it is community. You know, there's a shared consensus about things, whether it's ethics for an area, whether it's, you know, the way that we decide how to make rules for different competitions, etc. It's generally done as a collective. And so far, it feels like everything's been done as a directive from the IFSC. And, you know, for example, the first we hear of things is generally press releases. Athlete Commission, of course, gets to say, I would love for there to be opinion polls out front. What, do the what does the climbing community think of X? You know, it, I know that there's no real democracy in it and that, you know, we don't, we don't pay to be a part of that community. But I think so many of us are invested emotionally and passionately. I would love to have even just one click of say in... in even, it doesn't have to be a decision, but in influencing the decision further down the line, is that something that people would be up for? Is that something that could be realistically implemented? Um, yes, yes, no, uh, definitely. And, but just want to remind you that this exercise that we're making today is actually sure. the first step of that process. Um, and, uh, well, first of all, the, the FEC is not a very well-funded organization. It's growing, so... Um, but so far, it was difficult to put in place such a, such a link with the, with the community. So now the, the Olympic engagement program, is uh, the purpose is to have more input from the brands, so the key players, but at some point it will be also from, let's say, every climber of the world. Uh, it, might, it might probably need to, uh, to go through a technical stuff like a website. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's possible. We'll see how, uh, after a few months, how the, the OEP program 
um, uh, will be judged from the from inside the FEC, from outside. Um, but at some point, again, I repeat the the rationale behind this program is that now we we are into the games, and um, it cannot just be the FEC who decide about this. It needs yeah. to be all of us, and that's why we want to engage uh, all of uh, all of the, the the components of the climbing community. Great. Um, last minute for anybody before I ask for closing statements from these guys. Anyone want to say something, ask a question, share a thought? No? Great. Okay. Bram, uh, any closing statements from you? Um, yes, I, I think, you know, I just, I just want to reiterate how excited we are to have, have the, this new dimension into the Olympic movement. You know, it, it, it's very excited to, to try and experience something that we've never seen before. Uh, and, and try and really showcase it in the best possible way. And obviously very keen to, to listen to the athletes, you know, through the Athletes Commission at the IFSC, reach out to our Athletes Commission. They have, might have different ideas. You know, really, the, the, it's, the Olympic movement is a, a big world, but a small world at the same time, and really would encourage all the climbers and, and, and the IFSC to leverage that and leverage the opportunity of be, being part of the Games. Charlotte. Um, I think seeing climbing at the Olympics is something awesome. Um, with everything that comes with it, but I think it's it's going to be something awesome, and I personally like I'm I'm grateful to see that, and like as part of like my consulting job with the IFSC, I'm I'm really glad to see that all the community is very psyched about it too. Um, worried for some things, of course, because it's it's new and it's big, and uh, but if we work all together on it, I think it's going to be all right. Adam, anything you'd like to say to close? Opinion, question, whatever. I'm really happy that climbing is on the way of, I think, even getting all three sets of medals for all three disciplines, because I think that is what climbing definitely deserves. I think climbing, competition climbing is a great sport, is a great sport to watch. I don't think it needs to even change that much to be even more attractive. I think... Yes, there might be some changes that might even make it a little better, but I think we should stick to our roots and we should not change our sport we all love so much just to make it even more attractive to a mainstream audience. Can you imagine 12 years from now, LA 2028, three medals? Will you be there? I hope so. <laughs> Funny, any closing statements from you? Yeah, I think I totally agree with Adam and... He said it pretty <laughs> good, so yeah, I think climbing is an amazing sport and it deserves to be shared with more people. And yeah, um, let's have a chance for everybody to try climbing and discover this amazing sport by the Olympics. Why not? Rachel. I think it's just really great to see so many people from the climbing community here, so many people engaging and, and sharing their voices. And, and we can only encourage that to keep happening and, and keep working with the IFSC to keep the heart of your sport, sport true moving forward. Jerome. Yeah, thanks. Now I kind of repeat what I just said. Basically, uh, let's be all, all together on board, uh, exchange, um, share ideas and even concerns, uh, because nothing is written. And, um, and around the table, there's also the IOC, the Olympic Movement, and they're, they're, they're very keen in uh, working with us, like, all together. And so let's, let's make this happen. Stefan, we started with you an hour ago, and now we're going to finish with you an hour later. That's a great honor. So I would say uh, um, it's a huge responsibility uh, because um, climbing is a traditional sport. And uh, what the big public will see in the Olympics, they will expect, uh, okay, this is, this is uh, climbing. And uh, so we show climbing in the Olympics uh, and it should be shown as, it, as a traditional sport, comes from somewhere. And, um, and I think that's, um, that's um, the, the responsibility from all of you guys. And, uh, and uh, what I see, it's, it's, in, it's in good hands because uh, uh, with Jerome aboard and um, with the open-minded of the um, Olympic Federation, I think it's, um, it could become um, really, really powerful. And also with the influence of all the climbing community, I think we, it will get us on the right way, definitely. But uh, we have to be really careful, I guess. So then, 
Thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you to everybody. A big thank you to you guys for joining us. Thank you to you guys at home. Thank you to Vertical Life for bringing this broadcast to life. Thank you to Black Diamond as well. Um, quick note, Adam will be signing short bags and posters at the Black Diamond booth immediately after this. Uh, don't approach the stage. Go that way if you want to do anything like that. Uh, so we're finished. Thank you so much again. Uh, it's been a pleasure hearing from you all, uh, sharing opinions, dealing with some of my challenging questions. My name is Liam Lonsdale. Thank you again. Good afternoon. We're just going to do a quick photo uh, and then you can all disappear.